All right. So I was talking about issues pertaining to uh, getting the uh, discounted cash flow. So what I did was that he had multiplied the 5.6 by the 2.73, and I got the answer here to be 15. So I got here to be 15.2445, right? Then I'll do the same here by multiplying the 5.6 by 2.48. 5.6 times 2.48, 487, right? So that gives me 13.9272. So what happened on the third year? The third year, we are only going to what? Pay for the principal. We are going to pay for the entire what? Loan that we went for. So there's going to be a redemption. That redemption means that you're paying for the entire what? A principal. And the principal over here is quoted as 100. Please note that. It's quoted as 100. And because it is happening only in year three, we do not need a new factor because it's happened only for just a single year. If it's happened for only a single year, we need what? The discount factor instead of a new factor. So what is the discount factor of 5% for year three? That gives us 0 0.864. Please do not get confused because if you're looking at just an incident for just one year, we don't talk about unity factor. Instead, we talk about discount factor. And the discount factor of 10% for year three is 0 0.751. So what do I do? I'll multiply this 100 here by the discount factor of 5% for year three. And what do I get over here? 100 times 0 0.864. That gives me 86.4. Then what about multiplying 100 by 0 0.751? That gives me 75.10. So at the end of the day, I'm going to add up all the discounted cash flows at both ends. So what do I do? It is going to be negative 95. It's going to be negative 95 plus 15.245 plus 86.40. And here will give me 6.645. What about the other side? Here, I'm still going to what, add these items. So the negative 95 again, plus 13.9272 plus 75.10. That gives me negative 5.9728. So that is the answer. So you realize that when the discount factor increased from 5% to 10%, it has rendered the discounted cash flow here to be negative. And that is what we talked about at the beginning that an increase in the discount factor will have a negative impact on cash flow. And you can see that from 5% to 10%, the discount factor has now become negative. There is a negative relationship between the work or the discount factor and the, the MPV of that project. And that was the same idea that internal rate of return have that. In computing IRR as an investment appraisal technique, we need two MPVs and two what? Discount factors. We need two MPVs and two discount factors. So the IRR is equal to the lower rates, right? The lower rates plus MPV of the lower rates divided by NPV divided by MPV of the lower rates, sorry, NPV of the lower rates minus NPV of the higher rates. Then what do you do? You multiply all this by the higher rates minus the lower rates. So what is the lower rate over here per the family? The lower rate here is 5%. So you have 5% and 10%, so which of them is lower? We have 5% being the lower. Then what is the, if the 5% is the lower rate, what was the corresponding MPV? MPV here is 6.645. So that is the MPV of the lower rate divided by MPV of the lower rate still, we got it to be 6.645 uh, minus the MPV of the higher rate. I'm still using the formula. But unfortunately, the higher rate gave us a negative MPV. So it was already minus. So minus minus becomes what? Plus. So I still put my negative over here. 
and still put here 5.9728 times what? You can punch all this on the calculator without giving it any, any attention. Straight away, you get your answer. So when you want to go through this algebra, these two negative meeting becomes positive. Then you divide 6.645 by the addition of these two times what is 10 minus five? That is five. So whatever answer you get here by multiplying by the five, the fraction, talk about the fraction here, will be multiplied by the five. Then you now add it to the lower rate, which was 5% over here. And by doing so, technically, what answer are you expecting to get? By doing so, technically, we are expecting to get 7.6%. So this becomes the cost of debt to be used in our analysis. So on the day of uh, exams, work coming up, which you know for sure, work is coming up. You need to ensure that you have worked yourself through, through this bit and you are in good shape. Look at the step-by-step -step approach. Look at the format that we have used in presenting this answer and ask yourself, am I prepared on the day of exam? Can I do same to ensure